There is a referendum and one of our friends claims that the proportion of men in the population who will vote yes in the referendum is not equal to the proportion of the women who will vote yes. So we write down the hypothesis that the proportion of men is not equal to the proportion of women in the population both in symbolic form and in English. The proportion of men in the population voting yes is different than women's proportion. Then we think, okay, what is the other possibility? The other possibility is that the proportion of men is equal to the proportion of women um, in the population. And we write that down. The proportion of men in the population voting yes is equal to women's proportion. One of the two hypotheses that has equality in it, we will call it null hypothesis and we call the other one the alternative hypothesis. And we say, okay, we accept this null hypothesis tentatively and then we think about what we can say about the difference between the proportion of men and women um, in possible samples. So we tell our friend, okay, look, if we take a sample of, let's say, 20 people from the population of men um, and a sample of 40 people from the population of women, uh, we may find different proportions in these two samples. What would be the difference that if we observe between the proportion of men and women in our sample that would convince you that the claim that the proportion of men and women in the population are equal is not a good claim? So some people may accept that if something that has 10% chance of happening uh, happens based on a hypothesis, then the hypothesis is not a good one. But our friend says that if you observe that some difference between proportion of men and women in the sample happens, that based on the assumption that the two populations are identical has 6% chance of happening, then I will admit that the claim that the two population proportions are the same is not reasonable and I will let you reject it. But if you observe a difference between your sample proportions that is more than 6%, let's say 20%, 30%, then I won't allow you to reject my claim. Okay? Those things that have 40 or 30% chance of happening, they can happen as a result of sampling variability. And they are not significant if they happen. However, if something that based on the null hypothesis has little chance of happening happens, then I admit that the null hypothesis is weak and can be rejected. So we say, okay, if we think about the possible samples that we can take, every time that we take a sample from men and a sample from women, we may f see a different proportion in these two samples. Sometimes the proportion of men would be more than the proportion of women and sometimes the proportion of women would be more than the proportion of men. And the difference between these two proportions would have a distribution that would be a normal distribution. If the two population proportions are identical, yeah, so sometimes the difference is positive, sometimes the difference is negative. But if we take all possible sample couples from men and women and look at their differences, um, if the two populations are identical, the average of these differences will be zero. Also, the, the standard deviation of the difference between two proportions matters, uh, which is uh, which it follows a formula that is based on the combined proportion that we are observing in our sample. Now we tell our friend, okay, look, once we take uh, two samples, if we observe that the proportion in the sample from men is much bigger than the proportion in the sample from women, and this difference is much bigger than zero. Do you accept that we can reject your claim? Let's say, based on your level of 
significance if something that has three percent chance of happening on this side happens we can reject your claim and he says yes and also we say look if we if we take two samples and we see that the proportion of men is much less than the proportion of women so the difference between proportions is negative very far from the claim of equality of the two proportions then also we can reject your claim if this uh, rejection area is less than three percent um, so there are two possibilities for us to to reject your claim then we will actually take two samples in the sample that we take from the population of men we will see that 14 out of 20 uh, report that they will vote yes and in the sample from population of women we see that 20 people are reporting that they will vote yes out of 40 people that are in the sample so the proportion of men who are voting yes in the sample is 0.7 and the proportion of women who are voting yes in the sample is 0.5 which is um, not consistent with the null that says the two proportions are the same if the two proportions are the same we expect that the proportions in our samples to be close to each other however this shouldn't be enough for us to rush to conclusion and reject the claim that the two populations are the same because the size of the sample that we are taking from millions of men and millions of women is very small and the difference that we are observing can be the result of sampling variability so we have to do further investigation we need to know how much is the variation of the difference between two samples and for that we need to find the combined proportion of the people who said yes in our samples the combined proportion is uh, the denominator of the combined proportion is the total number of people who are in our sample we in total we have 20 men and 40 women therefore there are 60 people combined in our sample and the people who said yes there are 14 men and 20 women who said yes therefore there are 34 people who said yes in our sample combined and the proportion combined is 0 0.5667 now we can continue and we can actually find out what is the standard deviation of variations of sample proportions based on this uh, combined proportion we plug into the formula if the combined proportion is uh, 0.5667 then the 1 minus combined proportion would be 0 0.443 and once we do the math we see that the standard deviation of variations of the difference between the two sample proportions is 0 0.1356 the next step is that we have to find out what are those observations that fall in the six percent most significant observations that are different than the claim in the null and to find out the threshold of those two areas we have to go to normal distribution and find uh, the the z critical this point that is the beginning of these two rejection areas the normal distribution that we have sometimes just gives us the area between mean and a point therefore we have to find out what is this area the green area and then we have to go to the normal distribution and find how many standard deviations far from the mean covers this area okay so if this uh, if the rejection areas combined are six percent therefore half of them would be three percent and the green area in our normal distribution will be 0.47 and we go to the normal distribution to find this critical point where is the beginning of the 3% uh, most significant observations and this one of course the same so 0.5 minus 0.3 gives us 0.47 which is this area in the normal distribution if you go to normal distribution and search for 0.47 we will see that there is 
not at least in this table there is nothing but uh, we will see that the closest numbers that we have are 0 0.4699 and 0 0.4706 which this 0 0.4699 is very close to 0 0.47 that we want so this is related to z equal to 1.88 and we write that down z equal to 1.88 is the beginning of the rejection area of course z equal to negative 1.88 would be the beginning of the other side of the rejection area the next step is to find out is this difference that we are observing between the proportion in the sample from men and the proportion in the sample from women that different that we can consider it significant is this difference uh, in the rejection area so we have to find the difference between the two proportions in our observations 0.7 in men and 0.5 in women and this difference is 0.2 and it is different than the claim of the null hypothesis which is assuming that the two populations are identical and how different they are we have to measure it in terms of the number of standard deviations that they are apart so we divide it by the standard deviation of variations of the difference and it turns out that our observations are 1.475 standard deviations apart the two proportions are 1.475 standard deviations apart and if we locate it on the z axis we will see that the the z of observation is at 1.475 which is not in the rejection area and because our observation is not significant enough uh, we will fail to reject the hypothesis that the proportion of men in the population voting yes in the referendum is equal to women's proportion and therefore we cannot make any judgment about the other one so we have to suspend our judgment about the hypothesis that says the proportion of men in the population voting yes in the referendum is different than women's proportion and the reason that we failed to reject the null uh, and make any uh, significant conclusion is that the sample size here isn't big enough therefore the difference that we are observing can be uh, the result of sampling variability what we can do we actually can find out what is the chance of this observation if we find the chance of an observation that is 1.475 standard deviations far from the mean or more than that then we have what is called the p-value the chance of this observation so if we go to the normal table and look at 1.475 the chance is between the green area is between 0.4292 and 0.43 so let's say it's about 0.43 or 43 percent chance is the green area between the midpoint and the z of our observation and therefore the chance of those things that are farther than the z of observation is about uh, 7% on each side while our friend would accept only an observation that is as rare and as significant of 6% or less to be significant therefore looking at the p-value or the chance of our observation again uh, we reach the same conclusion that the proportion of people who vote yes in the referendum in men and women populations may be the same